This kangaroo, why do they live where they do? Where do living things live and why? There's life all over the planet, but not every species lives everywhere. That gives us three options for why different species live where they do. One, they could be distributed randomly, but we know that's not the case. We don't see camels in jungles or frogs in the desert. Two, species could live wherever it's appropriate ecologically. That explains why we see camels in deserts and frogs where it's wet, but it doesn't make sense for everything. Polar bears do well in the cold, but we only see them at the North Pole, not the South. And penguins are the opposite. They're only in the Southern Hemisphere, even though they would obviously do well in the North. Then kangaroos love to hop around and eat grass, but we only see them in Australia instead of other places like the American Midwest that are covered in grass. Three, species could live in places that they can thrive in, but influenced by the history of continental plates that limit migration. If so, we should see barriers or species distributions that match the tectonic plates and other barriers. And we should probably see these more for mammals, reptiles, or amphibians that don't travel as much, and less for bats and birds. Is this what we see? We do see sharp boundaries that make no sense ecologically, but do make sense historically. For example, we can literally draw a line in the Pacific Ocean and see only placental mammals on one side and only marsupials on the other. This line is called Wallace's Line, named after Alfred Wallace, co-discoverer of the theory of evolution by natural selection. The environments are extremely similar on each side of the line. In fact, some of the land masses that differ in their fauna are less than 20 miles apart. 20 miles now, but for most of history, they were further apart because these islands are on different tectonic plates. Bali and Lombok are within sight of each other, but carry completely different mammalian species because of their histories. In fact, when we look at a larger scale, we can classify eight biogeographic zones, or ecozones, in which the species we see are much more similar to others in the same zone than in closer regions in a different zone. If you're in Spain and you're a bird watcher, it's much better to go 2,000 miles south to Nigeria rather than 6,000 miles east to Japan if you want to see different species of birds. These zones mainly match up with continental plates. You can see the border of the Indo-Malaya and Palearctic regions are where the land mass that includes modern India recently joined with Asia. The Saharan Desert divides the Palearctic and the Afrotropic. Australasia is on a different plate from Indo-Malaya, hence Wallace's line. The Oceania Ecozone is also on a different plate from the Australasia. The blurring of the border between the Nearctic from New Arctic, like the New World, and Neotropical, New Tropical, is due to the Panama land bridge forming just a few million years ago. These ecozones don't match up clearly with ecological differences, but they do match up with the tectonic plates and thereby provide strong evidence that the current distribution of species is related to their evolutionary histories. Even if we didn't have fossils, where things live today provide evidence of a long history of life leading to what we see today. No matter which ecozone you're watching this from, feel free to click, subscribe, and share.